The Lord be with you. And welcome. This is our first Sunday of streaming. We are praying that God blesses this, that many people's lives are touched as we gather together, not only personally as we are today, but also through the streaming internet. Thank you to all who are joining us through streaming. May this be a blessing to you as you are to us. The one announcement that I have, or two announcements, one is we are still collecting names for pastoral candidates. If you know of anybody that you think would be a good candidate for the congregation, contact either the church office or me, and we need to do that by the 15th. So time is closing in on that window. Get us the names. We need the man's name and either where they live town-wise or the congregation they serve so we can get that information passed along. Also, um, Pastor Brower's last week was Tuesday. Retirement is official. He said, I don't know what it's like to have a weekend off. And he's enjoying it, celebrating we will be celebrating with him sometime in September. We wanted to wait for more people to have opportunity to do that. So look forward to the announcement of that and the date of when it will take place, and we will gather together then in his name. With that, let us join together in the call to worship. Unfortunately, with all the equipment set up, we don't have the TV monitor working today, so I'm going to be doing some turning back and forth to follow the monitor behind me. The Lord is merciful and gracious, slow to anger and abounding in steadfast love. The steadfast love of the Lord is from everlasting to everlasting on those who fear him and his righteousness to children's children. The Lord has established his throne in the heavens and his kingdom rules over all. Glory be to the Father and to the Son and to the Holy Spirit as it was in the beginning is now and will be forever. Amen. We confess together. O oh, Almighty God, merciful Father, I, a poor, miserable sinner, confess to you all my sins and iniquities with which I have ever offended you and justly deserved your temporal and eternal punishment. But I am heartily sorry for them and sincerely repent of them and I pray you for your boundless mercy and for the sake of the holy, innocent, bitter sufferings and death of your beloved Son, Jesus Christ, to be gracious and merciful to me, a poor, sinful being. God, be merciful to you and strengthen your faith. Amen. Do you believe that the forgiveness I speak is not my forgiveness, but God's? Let it be done for you as you believe. In this stead, and by the command of my Lord Jesus Christ, as a called and ordained servant, I forgive you all your sins in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. We pray. Blessed Lord, since you have caused all holy scriptures to be written for our learning, grant that we may so hear them, read, mark, learn, and inwardly digest them, that we may embrace and ever hold fast the blessed hope of everlasting life. Through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. The Old Testament reading from Isaiah chapter 55. For as the rain and the snow come down from heaven and do not return there but water the earth, making it bring forth and sprout, giving seed to the sower and bread to the eater, so shall my word be that goes out from my mouth. It shall not return to me empty, but it shall accomplish that which I purpose and shall succeed in the thing for which I sent it. For you shall go out in joy and be led forth in peace. The mountains and the hills before you shall break into singing, and all the trees of the field shall clap their hands. Instead of the thorn shall come up the cypress. Instead of the briar shall come up the myrtle, and it shall make a name for the Lord, an everlasting sign that shall not be cut off. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. 
in the epistle from Romans chapter 8. This is also the basis of our meditation today. So then, brothers, we are debtors not to the flesh to live according to the flesh. For if you live according to the flesh, you will die. But if by the Spirit you put to death the deeds of the body, you will live. For all who are led by the Spirit of God are sons of God. For you did not receive the spirit of slavery to fall back into fear, but you have received the spirit of adoption as sons, by whom we cry, Abba, Father. The Spirit himself bears witness with our spirit that we are children of God. And if children, then heirs, heirs of God and fellow heirs with Christ, provided we suffer with him in order that we may also be glorified with him. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. We honor our Lord and Savior Jesus as we stand for the gospel. The Holy Gospel according to St. Matthew, the 13th chapter. Glory to you, O Lord. That same day Jesus went out of the house and sat beside the sea. And great crowds gathered about him so that he got into a boat and sat down. And the whole crowd stood on the beach. And he told them many things in parables, saying, A sower went out to sow. And as he, he sowed, some seeds fell along the path, and the birds came and devoured them. Other seeds fell on rocky ground where they did not have much soil, and immediately they sprang up since they had no depth of soil. But when the sun rose, they were scorched. And since they had no root, they withered away. Other seeds fell among thorns, and the thorns grew up and choked them. Other seeds fell on good soil and produced grain, some a hundredfold, some sixty, some thirty. He who has ears, let him hear. Hear then the parable of the sower. When anyone hears the word of the kingdom and does not understand it, the evil one comes and snatches away what has been sown in his heart. This is what was sown along the path. As for what was sown on rocky ground, this is the one who hears the word and immediately receives it with joy, yet he has no root in himself but endures for a while. And when tribulation or persecution arises on account of the word, immediately he falls away. As for what was sown among thorns, this is the one who hears the word, but the cares of the world and the deceitfulness of riches choke the word, and it proves unfruitful. As for what was sown on good soil, this is the one who hears the word and understands it. He indeed bears fruit and yields, in one case a hundredfold, in another sixty, and in another thirty. This is the gospel of our Lord. Praise to you, O Christ. You may be seated. Are there those who did not get sheets this morning? And you probably never thought you'd hear a Lutheran pastor say this, but if you have a cell phone, take it out, especially if it has a Bible app, and turn to your Bible app on your cell phone, and as you do, turn to Romans chapter 8. And if you don't have a cell phone with an app, I encourage you then in the next few weeks, bring your Bibles with you to church. I know we as Lutherans aren't comfortable doing that, but it's okay to do that, and we can use our Bibles in our worship service. And what we've been doing, going back to Memorial Day, I looked at the, the scan of lessons for several weeks, and I saw that there was a, a good continuation of readings from Romans. And so I started at that time doing kind of a question and answer Bible study format for my sermons. Today we're brought to the words of Romans 8 verses 12 to 17. And the words that I'm going to use are from the ESV translation and also some of my own translation. But we'll walk together through these verses. And the sheets that you have in front of you will also be guides. If you want to fill in the answers, feel free to do so. Think about it, though, as you were growing up. How often did somebody ask you, who is your daddy? 
Or maybe they said something like, you must be so-and-so's child because you look like them or whatever, right? How many of us heard that growing up? Other than genetics, what types of things play into us being like our parents? And this is question and answer, by the way. This is not... And, and I told them last night, Angie, you'll appreciate this, teachers have an average, and Emily, uh, teachers have an average wait time of less than one second when they ask a question, right? I go 10 seconds. It might get a little uncomfortable, but that's okay. What things play into that role of you being like your parents? Sue? Okay, so personality, demeanor, some of our speech patterns. Roger? Okay, so that calm demeanor, the way we react to things. Anyone else? Matt? Okay, some of the, the things they enjoy, some of the hobbies, some of the skills that they build in us. You know, sometimes we teach our children some habits, right? Are they all good habits that we teach? Not necessarily. Roger, another? Uh-huh. Because you both know what's right, right? My dad always told me, take your thumb and bend it backwards, and the further back it's bending, the more stubborn you are. Who is your father? How many of you chose your father? You were born into the family, right? You didn't have a choice. We are born as children of God also. We didn't choose our Heavenly Father. He chose us. And remember this in life. Remember who's, who you are and whose you are as God leads you in living out your faith. Don't be distracted by the good and the evil that's going on all around you, the happy times or the sad times. Focus on your Heavenly Father and focus on your brother, Jesus. And throughout the Old Testament, it's interesting that the Jews are called the children of God. And Yahweh is referred to as their father. God chose them and called them to be his own. The second question, Paul makes a differentiation in the Greek words he uses. We who are orphaned, I was going to tease Lou a little bit earlier because she was sitting here all by herself. She was orphaned and nobody else in the room except those of us that were getting ready. We're all orphaned. But God calls us as his children, and he also says that we are sons of God. Now, when he says sons, that's inclusive language. It's males and females together, so he's not differentiating on that. Is there a difference between being called a child and a son or a daughter? Jan? Okay, so the sons were the inheritors, the daughters got nothing. Angie, was that you that was saying something over here? Or? No? Sue? So there is some age relationship there. But children are endeared. They are gathered by their parents. Sin alienated us or orphaned us so from God. And yet, through the only begotten Son, Jesus, we have been made the children of God. And so we look to the baptismal waters where we are washed clean. 
that after birth of original sin is taken away and we are cleansed. And so we also look not only to our baptism, but to the cross. Because it's through faith that we become the children of God. Faith begun at baptism and lived throughout our lives. So when you were growing up, maybe even today if you're able to do so, you would approach your parents with a need. Is there a difference when you approach your parents with a need, whether you call your male parent daddy or father? Terry, you laugh. <laughs> okay, yeah, exactly. And what, trans, or what word in our reading translates daddy is that word Abba. It's relational. I always remember my daughter coming to me, and if she said, Daddy, I knew it wasn't going to be a big request. But if it was something like, Daddy, the longer and the higher it went, the more it was going to cost me. You know, think about how we normally pray. We pray to our Father in heaven. But at the same time, we can approach our Heavenly Father as our Daddy, can't we? And He would give us all things for our good. Unfortunately, right now with COVID-19, there are difficulties that we have to wrestle with. And some people say it's because your Daddy, your God has given this to you. It's punishment. And other people say this is the devil working. Which one is it? Maybe God is calling us to repentance. And maybe he is allowing Satan to bring this upon us today to call us back to him. Either way, it's evidence of our sin and our need of a Savior. So how many of you, if you go to somebody and ask for something, would feel more comfortable asking your daddy for something than someone else? Think that would, are you more comfortable going to your parents? Why? Depends on the topic, okay? That birds and bees is hard to talk with anybody about, right? Daddy or otherwise. But yeah, there are topics that are hard to approach, but is it easier to talk to your father sometimes? No? Never? Not yours. Lisa? Because there's that relationship. You feel protected. Yeah. Your dad understands you. Gee, he's known you for a long time, hasn't he? He's known you as long as you've been alive, right? He's watched you grow up, so there's a lot of understanding. And I think it's more than just understanding, isn't it? It's the love that he has for you, the care that he's given to you, and he wants to keep giving it to you. And so he's going to sit there and listen. Have you ever asked your friends for something or some help with something they just kind of ignored you and turned away or really didn't listen? They kind of acted like they were listening, but they weren't. Yeah, and it'll happen more and more as you grow up. But the realization is your dad is concerned. He cares. He's going to listen, isn't he? because he wants to know. How often do we approach our Heavenly Father with our requests? Do we remember in our daily prayers to seek His healing for our land? How many of us have asked God to take this COVID virus away from us? To heal us? To remove the pandemic? He reminds us that if we fall on our knees and humbly pray, he will heal our land. So think about small children again. Is there a difference in a relationship with that small child who is born into a marriage as opposed to one who is adopted? You say no? They are the same. They are welcomed. They're loved. The only difference that I might see is one born into a marriage, hopefully is by choice, 
but the one who is adopted is specifically chosen. And that would be a great point for us to think about. Knowing that we've been adopted by God into his family reminds us that we are chosen. Jesus says in John 15, 16, you did not choose me, but I chose you and appointed you that you should go and bear fruit and that your fruit should abide so that whatever you ask the Father in my name, he will give it to you. And so we're led by those words to the reminder that our faith is to be a living faith, an active faith, a faith that is blessed by God so that we continue to grow and remain one with him, attached, bearing the family name. Does it make a difference if a child is adopted into a family at birth as opposed to when they're older? Yes and no. Explain, Chris. Okay. Uh huh. Okay. Okay. So, marrying into a family later on with stepchildren, the connection is a little bit different as opposed to if you'd been involved early on with them. Any other, Sue? So being brought into that family later, can, they can have some baggage built up that needs to be dealt with. Emily? Okay, so the trauma, the scars that they were living with prior to being adopted makes it a little bit harder to trust, to believe that you're loved because that hasn't been there. And it does take some work to overcome that. Now think of that from the faith perspective. There's no difference between when we were adopted into the family of God. Now, doesn't mean we want to wait and live our life with wild and frivolous living and until the very end and then just before we die we make a deathbed confession and, and we're saved, right? Well, we're not to play games with God. But it doesn't mean that there aren't deathbed conver conversions. I think about the thief on the cross who received Jesus' forgiveness and the door of heaven was open for him. We're all slaves, enslaved by sin, and even now our human nature tends to take us back in the direction of sin. Through the death of Jesus, we're set free. More than that, God has adopted us as his own. What comfort do you find in knowing that you've gone from being a slave to a free person to being a child of God? Peace, okay. How many of you have ever been in jail or prison? Terry, what's it like? Depressing, confining. One of the gentlemen that I used to visit when I first started going, shackles on his arms, chain around his waist to which they were attached, his feet with shackles and chains. Very difficult for him to get around and to do anything. And now think about those chains, those shackles being taken off and us being set free, being brought into the family of God, given all the rights, all the privileges of being one with our Heavenly Father, and then being told to pick up our cross and follow Him. You know, the cross is the one burden that we bear in this life that doesn't weigh us down. It actually 
lifts us up. It's the cross that reminds us of our Father's love for us and reveals that love toward us. The wages of sin is death. We are all going to die. But the death of a believer is so much different than the death of a non-believer. How many of you have ever been in the presence of somebody who is dying, either a believer or a non-believer? And is there a difference? Okay, let's start with Al. And was he a believer? Okay. And how was their death? Was it peaceful? Or, okay. Terry? Okay, so the, the screaming and the anguish of a non-believer versus the peace of a believer. Dion, you had your hand up. Okay, so Grandma sung into heaven and the peace that's there. Roger. So the witness of a, an adopted child from mom to the family, the believer. Was there another hand that I saw? The one that I remember was a, a little girl named Annie. The first week of kindergarten, they discovered that she had neuroblastoma. And so the treatments kept her from going to kindergarten. We went the whole summer or the whole year long, we get to summer, and I'd been visiting with Annie and her family quite regularly, but her mom called me one day and said, I think today's the day. Annie hasn't been baptized. Will you come baptize her? So I went out to the house, baptized Annie, and two hours later as I was kneeling beside the chair with her mother holding Annie, Annie's hand in mine, she took a very peaceful breath and slipped into heaven. And that was the hardest funeral that I ever did because that was the first one I had done for somebody of that age. It was the easiest funeral that I've ever done because I knew that Annie was in heaven. Her peace and the celebration that she had as she left this life was so evident to everybody in the room. We don't walk the path alone. Jesus leads us through. We're told we are born to a new life in Christ Jesus. What does that mean that we are born to a new life? Roger? Maybe I can use the words of the song, my chains are gone, I've been set free. The shackles are removed. Sue? Yeah. You know, the, the Egyptian, or the, uh, the Jewish people, I'm sorry, they looked at their first exodus out of Egypt as the freedom from slavery but they looked forward to a second exodus when Messiah would come. And they continue to look for that. But 
we look at it a little bit differently. We look at the fact that we've been delivered from the power of Satan. That is our exodus. We've been set free from that slavery to sin. And we look forward to the second exodus when Jesus comes back into this world and God's ultimate act of salvation is fulfilled in us as we are released from this veil of tears to the glory of heaven. We have an inheritance, but in order for an inheritance to be received, a death has to take place. We have to die to receive the fullness of our inheritance where we will stand before our Father's throne and share in His grace and glory forever. Isn't it comforting to know that our Father and that our brother will never fail us? Jesus has adopted us into the family of God, will not forsake us. The Holy Spirit is sent to us who will be with us always to know that we are loved, that we are welcomed. And you know, maybe it's time that we close the door. I know that sounds backwards, right? But think about it. When Jesus dies and the disciples are told of the resurrection, what do they do? They go into the room and they shut the door. There's all this chaos going on in the world around them and they need to get rid of that chaos and that confusion. So they shut the door to keep out the din of the world. And that's when Jesus comes into the room. Maybe we need to shut the door so that we can hear our Father's voice and invite our Daddy to be the master of our life. Maybe it's time for we, as His children, once again, to listen. Amen. And now may the peace of God which surpasses all understanding keep our hearts and minds in Christ Jesus, our Lord and Savior. Amen. We join together in singing the creed. Let's stand up for this.
Christ the Son, I believe in the Holy Spirit, our God is free in one. I believe in the resurrection, that we will rise again, for I believe in the name of Jesus, for I believe in the name of Jesus, for I believe Let us pray for the whole people of God in Christ Jesus and for all people according to their needs. Heavenly Father, we come before you on behalf of those who hold hopes and dreams in their lives for the church that you would fulfill the gospel through the words and the proclamation that you bring to us. Bless all pastors and teachers as you fill them with their gifts that you have poured into them. Lead them to you those gifts to guide and to build up others. Be with congregations who are seeking sisters, including our own congregation, that we would be blessed and guided to the man you have already chosen. May your word continue to be proclaimed and bear bountiful fruit. Be with our nation, with the leaders of our land, with Donald and Eric and Tom and all mayors, with Congress and all who are elected and appointed to serve our land. Give them wisdom in dealing with the issues that they face. Also watch over those who are called to serve and to protect. Military, our police officers, firefighters, doctors and medical staff and emergency personnel. As you guide them, we pray for provision for our land, for relief from the coronavirus and favorable weather for our crops. We also join in the hopes and the dreams of those who celebrate both births and the baptismal grace that has been outpoured into lives, weddings and anniversaries that are celebrated, and all who celebrate the victory over sin and death and have been welcomed into eternal life. Even as we hold before you those hopes and those dreams, we bring our needs. Hear the heart and the cry of your people. Come to them and meet their needs as would be best for your servants. Pour out your healing grace for those who are battling from the pandemic that we would receive healing and and guidance. And for those who have requested our prayers, including Dick, Harper Rose, Sharon, Jacob, and Dorothy and Linda, Jim and Marty and McKenna and Shay, Beth and Kevin and Martha, Guide each of them, even as we lay before you also those in our own hearts. Bless those who suffer, those who are persecuted for their faith. Give them strength to endure. Give strength to Pastor David and Lisa Solom as they have now laid their child to rest. Give them that hope and comfort that is ever before them as you hold them in your arms and and give them that strength. Be with our school staff as they continue to prepare for that time of opening once again. Lead them in all that they do to share the love of Jesus with our children. We thank you for the ministry of Pastor Ron Brower, who is now retired from active ministry, and yet who continues to live under your grace and proclaim that same grace to all that he meets. May we all share that hope. Lord, we thank you. Thank you for the healing that we have received, for the tithes and offerings that we bring that support the work and encourage hearts of your people. May we treasure most of all the grace that you give to us and return a portion of that grace and thanksgiving to you. Bless our faith that we are able to endure even unto the end as the sons and daughters of the one true king It's in the body and blood of your Son, Jesus, and the word that we receive that we are made brothers and sisters and that we are able to go forth with your hope in our lives and your love on our lips. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Amen.
Lord, remember us in your kingdom and teach us to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. You may be seated. Our Lord Jesus Christ in the night when he was betrayed took bread and when he had given thanks he broke it and gave it to his disciples saying take, eat, this is my body which is given for you, this do in remembrance of me. In the same manner also he took the cup after supper and when he had given thanks he gave it to them saying drink of it all of you, this cup is the new covenant in my blood which is shed for you for the forgiveness of sins, this do as often as you drink it in remembrance of me. The peace of our Lord be with you always. Amen. As you come forward to receive the supper this day, we ask that you cup your hands. Uh, We will drop the wafer into your hands. The cups will be placed on the table. The tray turned for you to receive the, the blood of our Lord Jesus. The lighter colored cups on each of the trays are for those that have alcohol tolerance difficulties. We will usher you up down the side aisles and then back down the middle. God has blessed us, God has called us, and God will feed us as we come to his feast.
now may this true body and this true blood of our gracious Lord and Savior, Jesus the Christ, strengthen and preserve you steadfast in true faith unto life everlasting. Depart in his peace. Amen. Let us pray. Heavenly Father, in these trying times, you come to us. You come to us with your Son, with his very body and blood to nurture us in our faith. You come to us in your word. You are present in our lives. We, as your children, call upon you to bring healing to our land, to our communities, to us. Bring healing that allows us to share the hope that we have been given. For we have received your strength. And now we go forth into the world. The doors are again opened but we would come to you in a quiet place once again to worship and to celebrate. For that we give you thanks. Amen. May the Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord look upon you with favor and grant you his peace. And I realized I left the line out of that. (laughs) The Lord make his face shine upon you and be gracious to you and look upon you with favor and grant you his peace. Amen. We go forth in his name.